Hello, welcome to Akihabara. We are about to go on an amazing adventure crossing the entire city center of Tokyo. So, it's going to take about 90 minutes to walk the entire length of uh, Akihabara to Shinjuku. It's a pretty exciting trip. Um, joining me on this adventure is a man down there at the bottom of the escalator. We're starting right here from the station. Um, there's a map, a link in the description, so you can see exactly the course that we're taking. Tokyo is not really as big as a lot of you think it might be. It's pretty manageable. There he is! I see him right there on the right side. Are you ready for this, sir? Oh, hey. That would be Fancy Peter. Fancy seeing you here. Do you hang out at the bottom of escalators often? Yeah, yeah, you know. I uh, just make sure people are holding the handrail and stuff. Excellent. Well, let's get out of the station. Yeah. But, but first, I wanted to buy you a drink. This is pretty cool. Um, this is a digital vending machine that they have here in Tokyo. When you Drinkable stand up to Drinkable curry? It. Yeah, this is what I wanted to get you. So you have your choice, buddy. Uh, drinkable curry or Ipudo ramen broth. I think I'll go with the ramen broth. All right, you got it. Thank you. Have you had either of these? Of course I have. Would you hear the music? That was kind of cool. It's like a bowl, like a bowling pin's getting knocked down. Oh yeah, I down. heard that. All right, let's get out of the station. Ooh, we, have nice a, we have a long walk to do, as you can see. Yeah. You ever done this walk before? Uh, I prefer taxis, John. I figured. All right. So we're going to be exiting Akihabara from the Denki Town, or the Electric Town exit. A lot of you know this because you might have been in Akihabara before. This is the popular one. Because straight ahead in front of us, we see Sega and a guy's head. So it's a beautiful day today. Thank goodness for that. Yeah, it's chilly, but we'll be in the sun most of the walk. So uh, we really need to work off all those cookies, the pudding, the cake, the yeah. chicken, yeah. <laughs> everything that we ate. Goodbye, Akihabara. In 90 minutes or less, we will be at Shinjuku, at least one of us. Yeah, I'm not sure I'll make it the whole way. Just because I've got some other things I gotta take care of. I'll be going to Hiroshima. Oh, right, yeah. In uh, a couple days. You do that every year to visit the yeah, family. That's right. It's a beautiful area, Fukuyama. Have you been to Fukuyama? I have. They're very famous for their um, fugu. Are they? I didn't know that. <laughs> it's, a, it's a castle town. For those who are interested in Hiroshima, uh, Fukuyama is a really nice area between Okayama and Hiroshima on the Shinkansen. Lots of uh, cool little island villages. And uh, have you been to Onomichi? Onomichi, yes. That's wow. a really cool, really cool spot. All right, there's Maid Dreaming, a Maid Cafe. There's another Sega World, number one building, and you can see some maids. If you look real carefully, maybe if you squint, you'll see them through the bright sun. Goodbye, Akihabara. So Hello. long, good friends. Path towards, path towards Shinjuku. Oh, chicken! Did you see that 7-Eleven truck? Can I open my bra? Um, no. Hi. She's waving. How rude of you not to say hello. I think she'll get over it. I can't open it yet? Yeah, at the intersection here. So we, we'll, we'll, I want to get away from the people so we can remove our masks a little bit. Ah, uh, yeah, good idea. So this is the uh, Ipudo Tonkatsu Ramen Soup. That's the good and, stuff. Uh, yeah. You say tonkatsu or tonkotsu? Uh, to, sorry, kon, tonkotsu. tonkotsu. <laughs> did I say tonkatsu? You did it. That would be delicious, though. I would go. <laughs> I would go in on that. Yeah. 
I saw Brad Sauce Studios in the house. Welcome. Cream brulee donuts for the journey. I wish, Irvin, but it's on the other side of the station and we have a very- Hello, Irvin. Very strict Hi. timeline here. How are you guys doing? Behind you, you can see the curries and the uh, vending machine there, but um, the Ipudo Tonkotsu broth drink is only available inside the JR stations. The Akure vending machines. Yeah, you can go ahead and give well, that a try. Yeah, let's try it. Do you shake it? I, I don't know. I, I, I guess if you if you want to. Shake it like a Polaroid picture? Shake it like a can of ramen. Broth. Let us know if you have any audio problems, if you have any questions. I'll be looking at the live chat. This is a live stream, by the way. So if you're asking why this the quality is really not that great, ask YouTube. Don't ask me because I don't have control over that. Danny's here. Hi, John and Peter. Have a nice day. See the Chomp is here in Tokyo Paul 360. Welcome. This is one of my favorite parts of Akihabara down here. Shall we cross here, the street? Let's under, cross the street then. Okay. Follow that Down bike. there under the tracks, there's a great uh, craft beer brewery. Have you been to that one? Yes, I have. That's the Hachino. Yeah. You know, these are 20 inch bicycle tire sized wheel bikes are quite popular in the city. Those are the everyday mamachari, we call them, and the most popular bike in Japan. One speeders. All right, I'm opening it. All right, let it rip. By the way, the uh, one of the beers you brought over the other day, I don't know if you were trying to play a joke on me and yeah. shook it up. Because when I opened it... I did not shake them up. The Sam Adams? Yeah, I opened one last night, and that thing went off like Old Faithful all over the kitchen. I tried to put my... That, you never put your thumb over a beer that's exploding. How did it taste? <laughs> well, what was left of it tasted pretty good. Oh, there you go. But I lost half of it on the floor and the counter, and it shot into the living room. That was room. supposed to be opened on New Year. Sorry. All right, you should have warned me. All right, here it is. The ramen broth. All right, bon appetit, sir. This is your Thank power you. up at yeah. least halfway. It's not bad. Really? That's not bad. Salty? It is very salty, but it's like, uh, it kind of, you know, the, the, like the chicken noodle soup that would warm you up on a cold day. Yeah. It's nice. I like that they put those hot drink, then the, um, diversifying the kind of drinks in the vending machine? It's not as rich as you would get from the broth from a bowl of ramen. Right. It's a little bit toned down. Well, normally you wouldn't drink that ramen broth more than a couple of sips, but I think the size mm. of can, this small can, is perfect. Yeah, it's nice. One of these days I gotta get, a, get, a, get some um, ramen noodles and then put that in there and see if it makes an Ipudo ramen. This, I just wanna stop here for like 10 seconds here. This is the Maruse sandwich vending machine. I've been here several times and you can get a, uh, a sandwich on the go from this vending machine here. And now they've added in Oden, which is cans of uh, stewed Japanese stuff. <laughs> it's like it's so many different kinds of things in there. Okay, they got the tone. This, this is actually the tonkatsu, not the tonkotsu. Yeah, this would be tonkatsu sandwich. Double pork cutlet sandwiches. Wow. and. How was it? Was it warm? Oh, they're, no, they're not, they're not warm. They're pretty good, but they come in, they, they're, they're cold sandwiches, but they come with a little uh, wet napkin and... Uh, mm. Wow, my mouth is watering. Pretty tasty. Is your mouth watering? Are you hungry? I am a little bit. You're hungry? A little bit. <laughs> not necessarily for a uh, vending machine sandwich, mind you. I've done this walk um, about five or six times already. Wow. On average, it takes me less than an hour and a half. And this is, um, I guess this, this, uh, this is an, the episode I want to show you how, how small Tokyo's center really is. Mm -hmm. it's, I think Manhattan is so much bigger than Tokyo. Well, yeah, most people are, are accustomed to being on the subway and you're kind of like a mole underground. You, you go under and you pop your head out and you have no idea what's going on in between. Right. right but so being out on the roads, it's, uh, it, is, it, it is a lot smaller than you think. 
All right, we're gonna be taking a right here, and this is gonna take us all the way to Jimbocho, which is the yep. uh, almost halfway point. Through, G is, through Jimbocho, uh, Kudanshita. Kudanshita, right? Keep on going. Until we'll Ichigaya, then we walk across the bridge to the other side, and then start walking from Ichigaya to uh, Shinjuku, I past might, Yotsuya. I might even stick around to Idabashi. You should. This will be filled with lots of ads as a result of Tokyo being like a commercial paradise for yeah. all sorts of stuff. I do have a map here I want to show you while we wait at the traffic lights here. It's too late. Oh, is it too late already? Anyways, there's a link in the description. You can click that link and you can follow along and uh, see exactly where we are on this route because I'm following this route because I've walked it so many times. And what is the, the name past. of this road right here? Um, I think this is Yasukuni Dori now. Yeah, 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 Yasukuni Dori. <laughs> you, you're the one who drives the city all the time. You're the one who drives the city all the time, right? Yeah, almost every day. Now watch this. Look up here. See this guy. Zoom in on him if you can. These guys, they never wear eye protection and they never have hearing uh, earplugs in. I know. He does, he's not wearing Ever. any eye protection. Never. That's crazy. Totally crazy. Their hearing must be absolutely Yeah, shocked. you probably can't hear anything at all. Um, I like walking at this time of year because what you see are wow. huge lines. Yeah. And the reason why is because... They're hungry. Yes, that's one reason. It is lunchtime. Another reason is a lot of the shops that are selling goods for New Year's, they might uh, have huge lines to get them. Well, look at this. This is a, like a, a, this is a restaurant, Matsuya. Yeah, this is called. a really old restaurant. The building hasn't changed That's since, great. I believe, um, the Meiji era, it looks like. Really old, old-style building. Sandwiched between some really um, higher and newer buildings. Looks like they were built in the 80s. I wonder what uh, sort of fare they have. I don't know. It looks like a, a, um, looks like a shokudo. Mm -hmm. Not sure. I, can't, I, I might have eaten there in the past. It's just a stone tr throw away from Akihabara. This is Ogawa Machi area of Tokyo. I see, I saw that Brandania. Thank you. We will uh, pick up something on the way, probably around Jimbocho. Maybe get a, another hot drink and a snack, something to to grab for the road ahead. I'm already kind of winded. I think it's just because we're we're out of shape. Or am I speaking for myself? You're speaking for yourself. Well, you have that heavy camera bag. That thing is laden with loads of high-tech equipment. Uh, that's well, look true. at this old Mercedes. That's one of my, that's a classic. Oh, that old one, yeah. Did you see that? That's an early 60s, I believe. You can see a lot of really interesting collectible cars. People get them out on nice sunny days during the holiday. Mm -hmm. They drive it through. Um, Drive it through. Uh, there's o there's o Ogawamachi and Awajicho Station, so you could change here for the modern Uchi line, or you could just keep walking like we're doing right now. Now the rule is the three C's: avoid crowded, congested, confined areas, and keep a social distance when you're outside really don't need to have a mask on but in Japan they're extra extra cautious so I see some of you might have concerns my feet are cold actually my toes feel frozen yeah well I've polished it off look you can see the turn it turn the other side you can see the what the bowl of ramen would look like there there you go Ipudo's got some good stuff yeah it was nice yeah I'm not a big fan of the chains, but every now and then I will jump in there to get a bowl of ramen. It was 32 calories. 
32 calories? No, yeah. that's 320 kilocalories. Oh, kilocalories, 320, okay. So you just drank the equivalent to half this trip, probably, of calories you would burn. So if it said 320 kcals, it would, that's not 3,200 calories. I don't know. Kcals, it's, it's 32 calories, basically. It's not, 30, not 320. That's so confusing. It's not 320. Tampaku, that's got about 1.3 grams of protein. Yeah. So that's Soto Bodidori cutting across here. That will take you towards the Imperial Palace if you go to the left. We're just gonna keep going straight. Straight as an arrow. Speaking of arrows, I've been watching that show um, Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. I can't stop watching it. I couldn't get through the first episode. For Three years ago, I tried to watch it and I couldn't get through the first episode. So I went back to it and said I can fight through this because everyone talks about it. And then I did, and I, now I can't stop. Can't stop it. It's got, what, like eight seasons? You eight got... seasons. I'm in season seven, and I started watching two weeks ago. Holy moly. I know. I'll watch when Leo and can I go to bed. Have in the background when I'm editing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're not good coffee. That's got. They have some good coffee. You can buy beans there. Many different varieties of beans. This is coffee row, I guess you could say. There's Yanaka Coffee, which is a, a local coffee brand. There's Tully's Coffee, and then a Starbucks right in the distance. There's loads of cafes we're gonna go go past. Maybe we'll stop in one of them and get uh, yes, please some, some caffeination. Yes, please. Coffee in there too. What? But right there is some coffee. Dude. Above the uh, cashier right there. The oh, oh my gosh. Coffee there. So the, the pharmacy also has coffee. These people love to have coffee. There's the hot water for the coffee. I didn't know that it, the pharmacies are competing with the, ven the uh, convenience stores now. I've never seen that before. You can actually get a pretty good cup of coffee at uh, convenience stores here. Do you remember, do you remember when, when we first came to Japan, you couldn't find coffee anywhere except the canned coffee, right? Mm -hmm. And now it's everywhere. Yeah. It's it's it crazy. The coffee revolution has begun. This place is one of my favorite Tsukimen um, places. Oh, Have man, you had this before? Uh, Tsujita. That looks really good. Yeah. Let me just show you the the uh, show you the vending machine here. I always get the Tsukimen, which is the the noodles and the broth are separated, but the ramen the is pretty eggs. good too. It's about eleven dollars for that. And you can customize it. You can get uh, larger eggs. size noodles for just another dollar. Show them the eggs. I did show them the ajitama. Yeah, oh, those, man. Aren't those delicious? They, oh, they're, they're going to um, open up a new shop in Akihabara. Oh, my gosh. That's one of my, that's better than the, the um, tetsu that we went to uh, a couple of years ago. Road Ladies Triathlon Shop. Those are some funky bikes. Look at those mothers. Yeah, they are pretty weird. Some more places. At lunchtime, there is a line out the door, but it moves really quickly. One thing that I gotta tell you is that when you do eat at a place like this, it's not a place where you sit your butt down and you stay there all afternoon. You you're wanna in get out. in there, eat, and get out, and then you go to the Starbucks if you wanna keep talking. These businesses keep the prices low because of the turnover. They move so quickly, the customers in and out. That's how they make their money. They keep the prices low to keep the customers lining up outside. It's kind of like In-N-Out Burger, right? I don't, I don't know. I've never eaten at In-N-Out Burger. I'm an East Coast guy. All right, so this is the limit of Ogawa Machi. And uh, you can also cross the Awajicho and uh, Shin Ochano Mizu. That Ichinani steak has been booming over yeah, the last couple of years. But chains everywhere. I don't think that the quality of the, of the steak there is, is really... Well, yeah, but they don't know better. Well, actually, I can't say that for sure. They, the, the Wagyu, they don't... Do they have Wagyu there? They have a quality... Uh, sometimes. I think they've have so they've got a, a menu that's quite varying from inexpensive to more top of the line cuts, yeah. but it's still not. 
it's meat, right? It's meat with the sauce on there. I saw Rainier is here. Rainier, Rainier, thanks so much. We'll, we'll put that to good use and get, get PVG some caffeine. So there's the uh, Yasukuni Dori and Hongo Dori. We're right now at that intersection. You can follow along on the map that was uh, in the link in the description of this video. There's a Ferrari. Whoa! Yes, please. One day. This is the path that we're taking, and this cuts across one side of the Yamanote line to the other. We're heading right up through here, right? Oh, no, you got up. Yeah, okay, you can right see the blue way. line cutting across here. Um, we're, 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 where are we right now? We're right, getting very close. We're right here, about 10%, 15% of the journey. We're getting close to Meiji University, which will be on the right side. It's a skyscraper. And then we'll go past Kita no Maru Park and Yasukuni Shrine and cut across from there. And then Shinjuku is right there. It's going to be pretty good when I get to the goal. I think, I, I know you could make it if you chose to. It's all if about, I, if you know, I chose to. Well. At the moment, I'm choosing not to. We all have to. options. We all choosing have options. not to. So from this area, we are now starting into the Jimbocho section of the city of Tokyo. Very famous for books, publishing, lots of uh, uh, Japan's outdoor biggest- sports. Outdoor sports as well, right. A lot of Japan's biggest publishers are in this area, including Shueisha, where I used to work about 10 years ago. As you worked a, for Shueisha? I did, English Editorial Shueisha. Advisor. Wow. Yeah, sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Did that open doors for you? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. It's an old traditional company. I can tell you the story how I, how I got the job. I was modeling for Gaba Eikaiwa, which is an English school here. And what I didn't kind know of how model? to tie. Look at this old house. I know, what you see. This, I hope that they don't tear it down, but I got a feeling that they are. That whole alley in the back there, very famous for having some of Tokyo's first Western cafes. Oh, wow. Yeah. The very first Wiener coffee, Wiener meaning Viennese coffee, mm -hmm. is back there too, where they put whipped cream on top of a oh, those are good. cup of coffee. They are very good. On a cold winter's day. Kind of like today. Yeah, they still whip, their, they still whip the, the whipped cream like they did uh, 100 years ago. Really? Yeah. With an electric mixer? No, I think they use it by the hand whip. But this part of the town, again, very old publishing, traditional. This nice big leaf. Look at that. Isn't that a beautiful leaf? Yeah. What is that one of the ginkgo trees, I think? I'm not, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, that's, not. that's a different uh, species of ginkgo, maybe. That bark is really interesting. It is. Should we turn Hope it over? Yeah. Turn over that leaf? Is that because it's a new year and you want to turn over it? Okay, just keep moving. Can't put anything past you, John. Yeah, sharp as a tack. Turn over a new leaf, sharp as a tack. What else do you have in your utility belt, Robin? <laughs> <laughs> Holy Jimbocho, <laughs> Batman. Megan reminds us that is not a ginkgo leaf. Yes, I know it's not a ginkgo leaf. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Perhaps in the chat they'll give us a little. Uh, it was a, a big, little, broad leaf. Yeah, broad leaf. There's another one. Another, yeah, another one. Don't ask me why we're limited to 720p. I've already complained to YouTube over three years now. Is this on 5G or 4G? It's on 4G because 5G is so unreliable and the app is not programmed to switch between the... It's, it's all about the YouTube app. It has nothing to do with the iPhone. Hmm. Just the, the... I don't think YouTube wants us live streaming. I think they want uploads. Maybe they don't, they don't feel like they need to compete against Twitch or something. I'm not sure. Well, they haven't seen John Dobbs live stream. They have not. Uh, no, actually, they have. I'm, I, I'm pretty sure they have. <laughs> I won't tell you any more than that. There's another lineup. Um, this is Tsujita. That's that's another branch of the shop. That's another branch of the shop we were just at. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They're really popular in this area. Another thing that's famous in the Jimbocho area is the curry rice, and I think you're gonna start to smell it a little bit. 
not here, but after the next intersection. If you see a can depository unit, let me All know. All right, you want to recycle that thing. Yeah, because my right hand is freezing, holding Il on to for good karma, you got it. This is a Victoria um, sports store. This is branch one of two, and I usually bought my... Uh... Hey, have a, have a, check, check this out. Yasukuni, which we'll be passing by, has illumination. Oh, wow. Didn't know that until January 16th. So uh, well, obviously we won't be able to tell what it looks like because it's not dark well, out. Well, if you, if you close your eyes and use your imagination, mm -hmm. maybe you'll be able to see those lights. Bright sunny day, look straight into the sun. I've eaten across the street at that um, udon restaurant a few times. Marugoto Menya. There's actually a good standing sushi uh, restaurant along here as well. Is there a recycling can here? Where? On the other side. Behind it? No? Oh, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes things are not as they seem, Peter. You have to look behind the machines. Yeah. <laughs> Good call. Spike zero two ones in the house. Been super busy lately and haven't been able to catch the streams. Merry Christmas, guys! Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Ring the bell, John. Ring the bell. Can you do that? I don't know. I'm not sure. I think it's, it's just a, there's a light under it. There's a Nighttime light. Yeah, lights, I don't so. know if you're really supposed to ring the bell. This used to be Victoria's, now it's Zebio, and they have running shoes. There's a, a guy who works in there. He always helps me um, with the new running shoes and gives me information. Old guy, I think he's ran in the most marathons I've ever met. Uh, anyone who's ever run, I think he's been in 100 marathons or something around the world. He always helps me with my shoes. So also this area is uh, famous for not only like snowboarding goods, skiing goods, lots of guitar shops. Yeah, I Heading noticed on that. Up into uh, Ochana Mizu. This will take us to um, uh, the university. There's Meiji University right up there. Hey, so I see that Raymond Centeno. Yeah. That's Meiji University's uh, skyscraper university. All in the whole campus in one building. It feels like. Do you know what they call this? Do you know what this shape? Is called John. This is a Gibson a starship. I don't know. No. Well, this is a vintage one too. What it's is called it? a flying V. Flying V. Look at the shape. I see that. And uh, makes me want to pick it up and kick over some speakers. <laughs> yeah. I have two of these. I've got two Les Pauls. Oh, yeah, you have one in your house? Yeah, I got two of Why don't two you display these. them or something? It is in my studio. Really? Yeah. Your house is already like a museum with those uh, paintings that you have in there. Nah. But uh, one of my Les Pauls, I actually had Les Paul sign it. I met when I was working at the Smithsonian. I, uh, there was an American Heroes Night and, uh, at the American History Museum. And uh, Les Paul was there, and I brought my guitar. Wow. And he signed the back of it. That is very cool. Very cool. Les Paul is a genius for those who know, are in the know of, about guitars and recording equipment. He was a genius. I don't think I've ever met a, a genius, a certified genius. You're standing next to one right now. Oh, Where's certified. The, yeah. Is there a mirror nearby? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> no, we're just kidding. I do love walking on... I want to get one of these. You, dude, you know, those are like a those. couple million dollars. You mean, why don't you just do a little GTA? Because that's a lot more fun. Imagine picking up a date in one of those. <laughs> we got the horn. She looks out the window. <laughs> That'd be pretty that would, cool. It'd be, it'd be like a memory that would last a lifetime. She would never forget you. No. Yeah. Forget serenading. Come in a... Uh, Tower, one of those uh, crane trucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, since we're near the university campus, you're gonna see loads of really cheap eats too. A lot of these cheap eats 
and the Jim Butcher area around Meiji, Meiji University are in the alleyways. So if you are staying around here, it's worth exploring, especially uh, after 6 p.m. when some of these izakayas open up mm. with cheap beers, oh, yeah. 180 yen for a jockey of beer. Jockey is like a jockey. Uh, jockey, yeah, mm. small, chew jockey. Medium yeah, size. Yeah, the alleys around here are fantastic. Well, anywhere in Tokyo, the alleys are in Japan. In the cities, the, the alley restaurants you find and stuff, there's always just oh, yeah. fantastic stuff. It's kind of a cool painting above that uh, first floor over there. Oh, right, yeah. You see that? Very it's, interesting. Uh, this is, starts the bookshop row when we turn the corner. Again, leaving behind Ogawa Machi there and then turning the corner, slightly making a curve. You can see in the map, the link in the description here. Um, and we'll be passing through Jimbocho in about two minutes to moving on towards Kudanjita. Did you try the McDonald's um, uh, beef stew pie yet? No. Is it's, it any good? Yeah, it's not bad. There it is right there on the yeah. poster. The, I, I did an episode on that uh, a week ago, just out of curiosity. It's pretty good. It doesn't beat the uh, adult cream pies we had. Uh. Did you have a pint of Guinness with it? No, that would have been a good idea, but I ate it at, at like uh, 11 a.m. or something. I'm not sure, I try not to touch booze until 5 p.m. or after. All right, you can take a quick look. This is like what the alleys of, yeah. of uh, Jimbocho look like here. And uh, they take you to all sorts of um, restaurants and pubs. A lot of them will change hands just because it is very competitive. And it makes a lot of sense just to just renew, start a new business because new places get crowded because everyone wants to try it. So you probably make all the renovation costs in the first 48 hours, you know, get all that money back and, ooh. Middle pawn shop. You see, this is a chain. If it wasn't a chain, mm. do you want one? I will happily mm. buy you one. Do you want one, Does that really? Answer your question. Mm. Okay, fine, all right, fine. Okay, here. Really, Uncle John? Can you pay by Suica? Sure. Here. Uh, okay, we got apple pie, we got custard pie, raspberry pie, chocolate caramel. This is the original melon pond. Okay, here we go. Normal flavor. Which is down below here? Melon. This is melon. Melon cream pie. Here you go. Thank you. Melon cream sounds good. Should right, you try that? Melon, melon cream. cream. Yeah. Okay. You should ask for the yakitate one. Which one? The one that's out of the oven, if they have any of the uh, oven. Yeah. And a, a raspberry pie, please. Raspberry pie. I should have asked for the yakitate. Meron pan is only good. When it's fresh it comes, out of the oven. Exactly. What do you say? Yaki. Yakitate. Yakitate. It's like uh, right out of the oven. All right, now technically, mm. I, I just saw you stick your whole head in there. No, just my nose. You stick his whole head in there. I just went under the flag of Italy. A lot of international cuisine here, too, in the Jimbocho area. It is. A little bit more international, maybe because of the universities or the publishing. I don't know what it is, but there's a, some extremely good uh, chikaryori, Chinese food, mm -hmm. some really good Italian places, and the curry in the city of Tokyo probably best here than anywhere else. And if you breathe in deeply, you can, you can smell the curry. All I smell is melon pond. Yeah, that's, that's sort of gonna, <laughs> that's gonna be overpowering if it's right in your hand. But you want the change back? 20 yen, all right. All, all coins must be accounted for by the crown. <laughs> Talking about Kanai. Whoa! So, did you know that the one in Shiodomi went out of business? Taco Bell? Yeah, there was a Taco Bell um, by the Ghibli clock at Shiodomi that went out of business. Oh, I didn't know that. They have an unch. There's an unch bell. You see that? Unchi bell. Unch bell. What do you mean by that? A taco, a Coke, and a potato french fries here, 500 yen. Oh, oh okay, so you see. <laughs> Unch bell. Mm. Just 
so you know, uh, unchi means poo in Japanese. It's, that's one of the first words I learned. Mm. All right, hold on. They want to see the menu. Here you go. They don't have any bean burritos. Everything is really pricey at this uh, um, Taco Bell in Japan. Everything is like three or four dollars. I no had dollar um, menu. when this Taco Bell first opened in Shibuya. I went there and it was crap. It was not it did, good. It did not taste good. It did not taste good. But this raspberry pie does. Is it good? By the way, is Jason in the house? Oh, Jason. Jason born, yeah. Jason from Canada. He might be here. Jason knows what that means. Jason. Mm, I'll take a bite of your cream pie. I, I will as soon as we cross this intersection. It's a little bit uh, You're crowded. You're such a tease. Yeah. Making the people wait. we got a long walk. Well, oh. Why don't you show them my raspberry pie? Oh, wow. It's not too shabby. There you go. You happy? You happy now? I showed everybody your raspberry pie. You proud of yourself? No, we're, Peter, we're like halfway done. You, you want to leave here? Well, I'll keep going a little bit. Isn't it really nice weather? So you need to get some vitamin D. Yeah. No, oh, I think we can make this light. Hurry. We can make this light. This light takes forever, Peter. Peter! There's Tokyo Dome. You see the roller coaster Never there? Never run with a raspberry Pi in your hand. We have, I made we it. There's Hakusan Dori. Uh, and Yasukuni, yeah, that's where we are. You can, you can follow along in the map that's in the, uh, linked in the description here. All right, I'll take a, take a bite out of this uh, mm. cream metal pond. Let me hold the stick. That's all right. Uh, wow. This doesn't look very inspiring. Yeah. It but feels kind of stale. Hold on, let me take off this mask. You don't really need to wear a mask outside. But it's, it's nice that everybody else is, so. All right, itadakimasu. How is it? it doesn't, it's not. It's not like creamy though. It's melon cream. Really? Oh, yeah. Interesting. It's uh, orange melon cream. All right, I'm gonna put this away because I think I'm gonna eat this with a coffee. That will stop off on the way to get. Mm. Oh, can I? Let me tell you about uh, my latest podcast. About I murder. Did well, nice sunny name day. like Homicide Inc. It's not a children's podcast, John. Well, didn't you read The Night Before Christmas on there? Yeah. Well, not on the podcast. That was on oh. the, the channel, the YouTube channel. Oh, this is the um, Shin Seikai um, Chinese restaurant. This is so good. It's not a lot of people know about it, but they have the most authentic Chinese uh, food, which is weird because they're probably made by. A lot of people from China at all the Chinese restaurants, but mm -hmm. it tastes like it does on the mainland. And it's very pricey. And they do have shark fin soup, which is probably not. Ooh, yeah, that's not very PC. Not very good to do, yeah. But, um, as I said, it's pretty authentic. Um, Shueisha, the, the company, would take me there after work, the director. Oh, really? Yeah, he'd pay because he has a uh, company allowance that he would have to use or lose, so we mm -hmm. would use it. Yeah, there's loads of, of really good, authentic Chinese restaurants, and they're usually pretty affordable. They are. They are. Um, GUTD Visalia. You should put your arms out, look up, and yell, War! And take a bite of your food. Not maybe, not next to Yasukuni Shrine. I think maybe. No. <laughs> Which is just up the hill here. This is just up the hill. You can see the gate, the Tori gate. <laughs> oh, yeah, just, I can see the, see the top of top of the tori, do you see that in the center? It's a massive uh, tori that represents the, well, that it's a shrine, first of all, and that it's a uh, yes, kudu. So, 
You're familiar with the Om Shinrikyo, right? Yeah. There's another curry place right here. I'm just loving the smells that come from the kitchens. Mm. Restaurant boys. Ham, whoa! Restaurant Hamburg boys? and curry. This is, I think this place has been around for a very long time. This is Hamburg and curry. And uh, it does look like it's from the 1950s, doesn't it? Like it. Look at their menu on the, on the window there. Oh, in black and, and white? Oh, right there. Oh, yeah, it's a bit. Okay, I'll share that really quickly. Yeah, there's a uh, Hamburg and curry. Interesting. It's pretty reasonable. Nine, about nine dollars, Peter. I know you love those. Oh yeah, ichigo daifuku. Oh yeah. This is also, I believe, where um, they have one of the best curry restaurants in the next alley over on this direction. You just have to, you have to know where to go, and that comes with living here <laughs> for like 20 years. It's so good, S&B Curry, which is one of the big curry um, manufacturers at the supermarket for prepackaged curry boil bags. They worked with that restaurant to produce a curry bag promoting it. Oh, do you think we can make this light, Peter? We can make this light. This is another long one. All right, just... Knock yourself out, John. I'm on me time now. All right, we're good. Peter! Look at him walking. Oh, I'm cool as a cucumber. No, dude! It's dangerous. What are you doing? I'll catch up. I'll catch up. You'll never catch up. You will not catch up. Really? <laughs> All right, we're not gonna run. He says, go ahead and he'll catch up. Yeah, right. He has no idea that I walk twice the speed as normal people. Who wrote that? Hot potato rates and ditch him. <laughs> I'm not gonna ditch my friend. You can probably still hear him too. His mic is connected to the same receiver. Anyways. PVG meant ketchup. You mean he's gonna go get some ketchup? All right, this part is not too interesting right here. But as we get underneath that, that uh, bridge, that's one of the, the highways, the Shutoko. I believe it is. You can see that on the map there. Um, he's not gonna catch up because there's so many traffic lights, he's gonna miss them all. I believe there's another Indian curry place right on the corner after this light, maybe. Oh, that's right. Another reason why there's a lot of curry in Jimbocho is because the Indian okay, embassy is you over there me? on the left side. Uh, We're gonna go right past the Indian embassy in about um, three or four minutes. Anyone who's wondering what is the parking like in Tokyo? There you go. It's a five, wow, that's pretty cheap. All night, it's for it's five dollars if you park there all night from eight p.m. to eight a.m. And if you park during the daytime, eight a.m. to eight p.m., it's twenty dollars on the weekdays, and then forty dollars on the weekends. It's pretty pricey. It's pretty pricey. Peter's not gonna catch up. Your buddy's mic is intermittently kicking in. I told him to stay. Why didn't he run? I think that melon pond is, is uh, weighing him down. Ray writes in here, ready to get back on a plane and walk Tokyo. Been listening to Peter's Homicide Inc. Ray, thank you. I'm, I'm sure my friend 
really appreciates the uh, uh, subscribers. It's also on Apple iTunes. If you want to listen to it as a podcast, um, Johnny, can you hear me? It looks kind of creepy. Oh. That would have been cute. I feel like a deer in headlights, like you're Michael Myers coming towards me on Halloween, and I have no choice but to, to wait here. No, Michael Myers doesn't walk like that. He just walks briskly with a knife. Have you not watched Is this watched the Starbucks the... you were talking about? Yeah. Have you not seen the Halloween movies? Yeah. Well, you, you should know about Michael Myers. I've seen Wayne's World. That's a different Michael Myers. All right, one of the reasons why we do have to go a little bit faster is I only had 70% battery life, and I have a feeling. What's it left at now? I don't know, because the YouTube app doesn't show me. I'd have to cut the live stream. You know, it doesn't, you know, you, YouTube has got billions and billions of dollars. It doesn't cost a lot of money to redesign the app to make it high definition, user friendly, better encoding so you could take, you know, eight megabytes per second and make a decent HD signal. I think 10 or 10 to 15 would be better. So it looks like there's a bit of a line better. here at the Starbucks. What's that? There's a bit of a line. There's another one up, up ahead. Okay, well I'm taking off to the right here very shortly. Oh, okay. You're gonna depart at uh, Kudanshta. Yep, here at the next intersection, probably. That's the base. Starbucks has a hojicha caramel going on right now. Hojicha is a burnt uh, green tea, kind yeah. of uh, been roasted. That's a better word than burnt. Yeah, roasted. I like this. The McDonald's um, on the on the go, just a window. There's a samurai burger. Samurai Mac. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of uh, McDonald's, but I do like the way that they innovate here in Japan. Yeah, Tati's. Tati, Tatiya is an Indian restaurant. All you can eat naan. It's usually, what, seven, eight dollars, and you can have seven, eight pieces of naan if you want. You, I've never left there with on an empty stomach. Wow. Indo shokudo. Indo teishoku. There's Meijiro Dori, and we're still on Yasukuni Dori, going towards Yasukuni Shrine. <sighs> it's a good walk. Yeah, nice. I think I'm gonna peel out to the right here after we cross the street. This place is crowded during the cherry blossoms like crazy, right? Yeah. You can see it's just see lined up on the other side. Do you know what that building is right there? The back behind is Budokan. That's the Showa era museum. Oh, interesting. It's kind of neat to see the period between the 19, uh, I guess, late 20s to 1980. 1989, the Showa period. I was born in Showa 64 or 60, 60, 49, sorry. And I believe that building there was where the war crimes a trial was done by the U.S. Uh... My dad, if that's where uh, they were having the, uh, the court Hearings. Yeah. My dad was in there. Really? Yeah. I believe that's For the Tojo's building. Tojo's hearing. Yeah, inside that building, and there. I, I believe they've they've been trying to reconstruct it, and I think they put a building inside the building. Do you see that skyscraper? Yeah, yeah. Before that building was built, it's a brand new building. This is a beer garden on the roof. <laughs> wow. I loved it. The way the connection to history and beer. All right, buddy, if, if you gonna, got a cruise here, there's a Starbucks right there. Yeah, I'm going to walk up this street and down to, uh, to Ida... Idabashi. Idabashi. So I bid you farewell. So long. Thank you. You can Happy see... Holidays. Yeah, you can see this guy on Homicide Inc. The Homicide Inc. Uh, Homicide Inc. is the podcast. You can't see me. You can hear me. What's the story? Latest story is... Uh, the latest one is about... The gas uh, attacks? The Om Shin Ryoku. Right. Sorry, Shin Rikyo. Om Shin Rikyo. It's, uh, yeah, the, the, the death cult um, that, yeah, terrible people. But it's a crazy story. Uh, 
1995, the, the sarin, the, the infamous sarin gas yeah, attack. Yeah, line. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, please have a look at the Homicide Inc. podcast. It's a weekly podcast, and uh, we're almost at one year. Started last January. Wow. So we're at episode 47 now. And, uh, yeah, if you like true crime, be sure and check it out. It's good, good to listen through the uh, New Year holiday. Yeah, for sure. Listen sure, to some crime. So. Profession, read by a professional voice artist, the voice of the Tokyo 2020 Olympics, the ANA videos, several Nintendo games, and what else? And a lot of other things you'll discover walking around the city of Tokyo, including Tokyo a few, Tower. A few jobs under my utility belt there, John. I see that. All right, thanks uh, for joining us and bringing my camera back. See you yeah, later. Yeah, you're welcome, you're welcome. If you want to get a coffee, put it on my tab. Only in Japan tab, right. All right, th see you, Peter. PBG. All right, it's just us now. Uh, this mic is getting off here. I'm gonna actually turn off this mic, so I gotta plug it in to charge the camera. The smartphone. All right, Mike, Peter's mic is now off. All right, we're gonna walk this direction. I'm gonna show you Yasukuni Shrine once again. If you're not in an area where it's, it's, it's crowded with people, you don't have to wear a mask. It's just, it doesn't make, make a lot of sense. In the city of Tokyo, you'll see things like this, where they show the new and the old, and what it looked like in the Meiji period, the Edo period, and what it, looked like, what it looks like uh, these days. It's pretty interesting. Um, this is a lighthouse. It's pretty weird because we're in the center of Tokyo. This would be the Imperial Palace way back in the day. We're gonna go right past there. Tokyo is an ancient city. Before it was called Tokyo, it was called uh, Edo. Dan133, Peter was here. I, it is a pretty long walk. I, I know he's gotta get back to his family. But for me, I do need to get a little bit of exercise. Now, it, it makes a lot more sense to walk from Shinjuku to Akihabara, but I left my camera at Peter's house, so I had to walk. So he had to meet me at Akihabara because he lives closer to Akihabara than Shinjuku. But when I'm running the Tokyo Marathon, which I've done five or six times, it's all downhill from Shinjuku, which we, where we start to the goal, to, uh, to um, Ginza. So walking it the other way, there's a kind of a steep incline. There's a lighthouse on the left side that we just saw about a minute ago. That's right, do smash that like button lightly. Don't break your smartphone. This is something I wanted to do, show you how, how small Tokyo is. Trying to set a good example, don't cross on red lights. Kids are watching you make that decision, breaking their hearts by breaking the law. All right. Look at this massive Tori gate. This is the entrance to Yasukuni Shrine. Oh man. Um, used to be a great place during Used to be a great place during the cherry blossoms. I believe this is a, these are sakura tree here. But over the last couple of years, <coughs> whew, over the last couple of years, they've really, um, even before the pandemic, they've really tapered down on the celebrations there. It is still a shrine. Uh, I think they've closed the um, drinking places because it was getting a little bit out of hand. Maybe they'll bring it back next year. I'm not sure. My feeling says this year Cherry Blossom Festivals will still be on, but considering that Japan is a country where we try not to have any risk whatsoever, <laughs> you'll never get to zero percent risk, but they try their best. It's going to be, some places are going to suspend their Cherry Blossom Festivals and some places are still going to keep them going. I don't know. There is the, uh, whew, 
It is a steep incline here. The Embassy of India, straight ahead in, in your picture behind the Japanese flag there. I'm going in there to get my um, uh, residence card for India. Uh, people of Indian origin, or I guess they call them uh, OCI cards, Overseas in Citizens of India. So I got that in there. The ambassador at the time watched only in Japan, by the way. Pretty cool. All right, and that's Kita Nobamaru Park and the Budokan. I think if we walk a little bit here, you'll see the Budokan. I, I watched Eric Clapton play in there about nine, eight or nine years ago inside the Budokan. Clapton was playing in there. It was awesome. That's also where they hold the judo events for the Olympics, 64 and last this year. Um, you're not legally allowed to brew beer at home. Do you get in trouble for that? I saw the question. But I, I don't think it, you can buy the ingredients. It's really hard to do that. They don't have home brewing kits. But my buddy Andrew has been brewing beer the right way. <laughs> and and he, I had him on a live stream about two years ago. And we'll try to have him back. He knows uh, everything about the craft beer business here in Tokyo, in Japan as well. Travels around and um, also works at a craft beer place that serves his own beer. It's pretty cool. Yes, my mother is from India. She speaks Marathi, Karada, which is the language of Bangalore and Hindi, English, I think some other dialect. It's a lot of uh, languages in India. Look, I, I don't know why it's illegal to brew beer in, in Tokyo, but, or in Japan. I, I just think that the big brewers, Asahi Kirin, Sapporo, don't like the competition and they have, the lobbying here in Japan is very strong. I don't really know why. The licenses to make sake as well, very strict. Um, I was talking to a guy in Totori Prefecture. He makes, he, he doesn't want to pay for the license to make Japanese sake. So he makes a dubroku, do, 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 it's like a fizzy Japanese sake before it becomes Japanese sake. They stop the process so it's fizzy and he doesn't have to pay taxes or the taxes are very low on that. The, you, can tell, you can tell it's not sake, it's, it's do, doboroku. I, I never get it right, I, I, can't, I can't picture the kanji in my head. There's a, a hole in the cap of it so it lets some of the air out because it's a living, breathing uh, uh, sake. Well, it's not sake because they technically don't pay the taxes on it, but the taxes here are awful. We, because of the taxes on beer, beer makers came up with haponshu, which is a different beer not made with the things that they tax. I think it was like barley or hops. They used like chickpeas or something. So by using chickpeas or something else to make the beer, the taste was very, very close but they could avoid the taxes. And so the beer prices went down to like 100 yen a can. Then they taxed it, and then they went up to like 120 yen a can. So, you know, you can't, it's really hard to get around some, some of the ancient tax laws. And I don't know. Japan is a country that will always have really strict laws and have their own way of doing things. You don't have to agree with it. It's just the way things are. All right, Yasukuni Shrine's on the right side. They're doing some construction work on the wall, but typically this white wall would be a really ancient wall, which you can't see right now. And the signal might not be so strong because we are between a lot of buildings on the top of a hill. All right, we are about over halfway there, I believe. I'm gonna check out the map in a second. The second half of this, I'm going to have to put the, uh, take out the wireless microphone and put in the uh, battery charger because 
Battery is at 10% right now. But big thank you to Peter Von Gom for joining us for half of the walk. And thank you for joining me for the entire walk. I'll point out some interesting things as you walk along. The British Embassy is around here as well. I think it was down there. It's right, it's right near the Indian Embassy. Here's the entrance uh, to the Yasukuni Shrine part. And during the cherry blossom season, it is absolutely beautiful in this part. Now they do have them at the other entrance, but this area of Yasukuni is very beautiful. Um, so there's more than one entrance to get into the, the wall looks like this on the right side. This looks like it's been um, finished with the renovations. Here's Yasukuni right there. We're gonna walk all the way to here and then I gotta cross the bridge when we get to Ichigaya. So we're gonna be crossing the river and then walking this direction. And then we're just, we're in the home stretch towards Shinjuku. By home stretch, I mean like we still got a long way to go. But now that we lost dead weight, Peter. <laughs> I can walk a little bit more seriously and faster, briskly, which I think we're gonna have to start to do because we do have to get there. We have 30 minutes to go. How close do we get in that 90 minutes? According to Google Maps, it takes you an hour and a half. But we did stop and we missed a couple of key traffic lights. The good thing is we're at the top of the hill now, so. The flags that you see, the Japanese flags, you don't typically see that flying it's because of the Japanese New Year, which uh, the season starts on the 28th or 27th. Shogatsu is what we call it, and it usually is a, a week. People start to, un, uh, to wind down right now, and businesses are closed, a lot of them are. And it's a holiday period where we can relax a little bit. Shogatsu is, I don't, I personally like to be here during the Shogatsu time. I like to be abroad because it's just, it's, it's so quiet. My first three years here, I got out of Japan for the Shogatsu. I spent the first one on the streets in Bangkok for New Year's. That was a lot of fun, 1998 to 1999. And then the next year, where was I? Oh gosh, I don't remember. I think it was in New York on Times Square. You have to do that once in your life. Oh, that's pretty. Look, I like these uh, photo studios will show some of the pictures of the people. You do, but you, you have a uh, nice traditional poses with kimono. We'll have to do that with Leo sometime next year. Oh, and if you do get a postcard from the Postcard Club, I will send it out to you. It's a family photo of Leo's first 100 days. All right, I'm jettisoning the uh, uh, wireless mic right now, and we're going onto the phone mic, so there might be some wind noise. Three, two, one. Okay, I hope the audio is okay. No problem, rights in space junk, thank you. Dutch Universe, my ears. Homicide podcast rights in here, way noisier. I don't think we're gonna make it. Peter, the, the uh, battery that I have is at 0%. All I can do now is to go as fast. Oh no, what I can do is this. The gimbal has a charger. Okay, I'm gonna... Oh no, but it's a USB-C. Oh, darn it. 
I need to get a USB-C to USB-B converter. I don't think we're gonna, I don't know if we're gonna be able to make it to Shinjuku. Darn it. Shinjuku's got a lot of electronic stores, so I would be able to find that converter, but I don't know. Maybe we'll stop out at a vending machine, in a convenience store to see if they got it. Anyways, I'm gonna have to change this uh, live stream title to We Only Got Halfway. <laughs> that's, that's awful. I don't think we're at 70%. The slog between uh, Ichi Ichigaya to uh, Shinjuku is quite far. We're now going downhill, which is a good thing, but the battery is at like 1%. I, I didn't ask Peter to charge the phone. I thought, wait a minute, hold on. I might have been smart realizing that I had, wait, I might have, have, I might have another charger. Wait a second, hold on. I do! I do! I got another charger so I could I could put this into the... Oh no! This is USB-C as well! Oh, you gotta be joking. Really? This is USB-C as well? I thought this was a USB old style. You gotta be kidding me. Hey, can somebody check online and see if the uh, DJI... Osmo 4 mobile can be charged using the USB-C out. There's a USB-A out. I don't know. If it can, then we're saved. If not, then we're... We're up the creek. One of the reasons the wireless mic audio quality might not be as good is because it's dumping two microphones into one receiver. So the audio is going to be slightly lower. So we have to um, speak up twice as loud. That's a probably a no right in here, Crompton. Really? You know, why do they have that port there? That's for charging. It's only for charging in and not charging out. So you can't use the USB-C port to charge your phone, but you can use the USB-A port to do it. And I've got two USB-C to lightning ports. You know, that's just wonderful. All right, I'll tell you this. Whatever's left in the portable battery is charging, okay? So, I'll just keep on streaming until I can't stream anymore. So if it goes dead, that's the end of the stream. <laughs> right, you know what, hold on, I think, are we gonna do a really quick run in here? In a fat family mart. USB Lightning They have something here. Hey, card or that? Ah, just to show you guys.
。ありがとうございます。Oh my gosh, that was that was seventeen dollars for a simple wire. I'm not someone who likes to give up, so、I'm、just gonna have to eat it. Holy smokes! This was seventeen dollars. You can get these at the hundred yen shop. There's never one around when you want it, right? I guess you got to pay for the salaries of the people working there. They are hardworking people at the at the convenience stores, so I just don't think that they're they're gonna see any of that money. We had a tip jar. All right, we're in business. It is highway robbery, but I did make some super chats here, and we want to use. It does come with a very nifty、uh, Velcro strap, <laughs> uh, but I needed this this、uh, USB A out. So there we go. And we go. I really hope it charges. Is it worth it? No. Well, if if it keeps this live stream going, it's worth it. If it doesn't, it doesn't. That's. I want to go all the way to Shinjuku with this live stream. Okay. It's plugged in. I cannot say. For sure, whether or not it's charging, I'm guessing maybe it is. So I, I want to show you this point here while the light is green or light is red. We're right over Ichigaya Station. Do you see that there? So you can see the trains going to、uh, um, through here. They're going towards Shinjuku. A second. I always carry an extra wire, but. Not everything is USB C. We're like in this really big transition period between USB C and USB A. All right, just one second. Now the wire is free. All right, we have some freedom there. Cool. I'm sweating too from this walk. All right, here we go. In one one second, that's Ichigaya Station right there. That's a JR station on the on the Chuo line that cuts across from Akihabara. To Shinjuku, instead of taking the Yamanote line, sometimes it's more convenient to take the Chuo line. If you're at Tokyo Station or Akihabara, you want to get to Shinjuku really fast, jump on the Chuo Express line. It stops at Ichigaya and、uh, Akihabara, I think, and then that's it. You get to Shinjuku in in 12 minutes or less, faster than a taxi, that's for sure. It's a beautiful day. On the other side, you see there's some people waiting on the platform there for the train to go by. It's an old station.、Um, they haven't quite yet made the renovations to it, but I bet you in the next couple of years, you're gonna see、um, the renovations start to take place at Ichigaya Station. On the other side, you can do some urban fishing.、Uh, YouTubers have already covered that pretty well. But if you're if you want to follow me along, the map there's a map. Linked into the description of this video, and we're walking all the way to Shinjuku. We're kind of like halfway there. So we are right there where the crossing over the river is. So we're gonna cross over to the side because there's another intersection that's very difficult. This would be the home stretch, sort of. <laughs> not not quite the home stretch, but it's just a matter of walking straight and then a 
left and a right, but we're gonna go right past this building, the Ministry of Defense. I like how they don't, instead of using um, Department of Defense, I like how they use ministry for everything. The Ministry of the Interior, the Ministry of Justice. Sounds very religious. <laughs> like, I guess the people there are lifetime workers appointed for life. Wasn't that a, a band in the 1980s ministry? Can't remember. Oh, check it out. Here's a shrine, a lot of people are going up there to either take a shortcut. Sometimes the, the shrines offer shortcuts to go from one place to another. I can't get off of the target too much now. We gotta make our way to Shinjuku. Ministry was a cool band. I had a lot of, a lot of my friends were into the heavy metal music back in the 1980s. I didn't judge. I was somebody in, back in high school. I was somebody back in high school that I kind of went in between all the groups. We had the freaks. They were the people who dressed differently, like heavy metal band people. They're called freaks. Then there were the jocks, the people that were, you know, into the sports. There were the geeks. There were the nerds. Hey, everything was segmented into groups. I kind of crossed through all of that. I was into everything. We didn't have the goths. It's like a, you know, back in the 1980s and 90s, it was mostly uh, freaks and jocks. Oh, and then, and then there were the skaters. And I had a lot of friends in the skateboarders. I never, I never picked up a skateboarder. I never skateboarded, but when we were at school, it was really nice to have, to hang out with the skateboarding people. They had these long hairs. It was shaved on one side and they swooped it over so it was long on the other side. It was weird, but in a cool way. Skaters. All right, so we're gonna be walking past the Ministry of Defense in a second. Now, when you run a Tokyo Marathon, I believe this is still the course. Again, it's all downhill, so I'm work walking uphill. Very, very light gradient. Not too steep, but it's a, uh, you certainly appreciate it when you're doing the Tokyo Marathon. The first 10K of the Tokyo Marathon is downhill. I was probably, I, I would have been in the Misfits group then. I didn't, I didn't fit in any group. I mean, I did sports, but I wasn't really good at it. Not like the, um, you know, varsity. I got varsity letters in my senior year, but not like uh, really talented sports people. I kind of like, uh, on the fence, right? Sort of a little bit, little bit everything. But that's the best way to do it. You could learn about all, all the different kinds of people. And I left high school knowing about ministry and <laughs> the group. Even went to, I went to some uh, Def Leppard concerts. Learned about them because I had friends that were interested in them. Went to the one concert after the drummer lost his hand. That was amazing to see him a drum with one hand. It's absolutely awesome concert. That was the was out the that was hysteria. Yeah, Def Leppard hysteria. Yeah, Metallica, Black Album. That was when I was in uh, high school. Some of the best music came out between 88 and 92 when I was in high school. The Pearl Jam, the uh, uh, Nirvana, that started as well. Van Helen was always big. All right, here's the Ministry of Defense. There's a lot of coppers there. Uh, so that, that building up there on the top is there. I'm just gonna walk past here. 
but Shinjuku is about another another 10 15 minutes we should be in in the Shinjuku uh, I don't know spear so if I pan up you can see the Ministry of Defense right there it's pretty cool they have their own like cell phone tower Bring back memory of the Tokyo Marathon. This road is so wide. And it's so quiet on the side of the city. Do you see the difference between where we started in Akihabara, walking through Jimbocho, down Yasukuni Shrine? Hey, I wonder if PVG, if that truck would be appropriate for... <laughs> he said he always wanted to drive in one of those, pick up a date, one of these crane trucks. The Homicide Inc. podcast, 610,000 yen for the new walking shoes, cables, piping hot ramen dessert. Homicide Inc. podcast, enjoy the holidays, everyone. Writes in PVG, 610 yen. I can count the zeros, PVG. <laughs> it's very much appreciated. Definitely, do, do check out his podcast. It is really well done. It's really well done. <sighs> ah. Hiya! I love it! Fresh air! <sighs> ah, exhaust! Fumes! How's the signal, everybody? Tokyo Paul 360! Happy New Year! You know, I. Tokyo Paul 360, I. I, um. Kanai and I, we went and did a live stream at um, Asakusa on the on 2020, right before the pandemic broke. And it is so weird to be out because we're in a massively crowded space. Go back and look at the archives of the Only in Japan Go channel to uh, 2020, January 1st. It's a really awesome view of the New Year's on how the world changed. and. A lot, loads of tourists were there too, and a lot of people who knew what, what I do for, with uh, Only in Japan. So a lot of people came and said hi during the live stream. But when I look, I go back and look at that podcast, the, uh, sorry, the uh, episode, it's just so different compared to the way the world is today. And even now, two years later, people are asking me to wear a mask when there's like nobody around. It's weird. Real Selects is happy with the resolution. Thank you. <laughs> so for those joining us, we are walking from Akihabara to Shinjuku, getting close to our goal. We're just passing the Ministry of Defense. They have their own cell phone tower. So if the rest of the world goes dark, they can still communicate with the outside. It's pretty cool. He has hailed a cab. I wish I could do that, but I'm sticking to it. It's 7.1 kilometers to walk from Akihabara to Shinjuku. It's not really that far. There it is. This is the first half. We walk from Akihabara past the Imperial Palace to Ichigaya. We cross the bridge past the Ministry of Defense, and the second half takes us to Shinjuku. We are now passing through Yotsuya, and then once I get through this intersection here, Akebonobashi, we're pretty much in this, the spear of Shinjuku and we start to see the high rise buildings coming into um, view, probably in about five minutes from now. I got my fingers crossed that this battery charge is working. Roughly four miles, right? Thank you for the, the conversion. This is still Yasukuni Dori. Let's see if we can hit a vending machine on the on the way now. 
Well, if I see some, uh, some delicious street food, we'll stop as well. Google Maps puts this walk at one hour and 30 minutes. I thought maybe we could do better, but I had dead weight <laughs> walking with me for half of it. It's all right, I'm just kidding. We walk pretty quickly. Jennifer, it is, it's a little chilly out here, actually. Oh, we gotta make this light. Oh my gosh, I was not not gonna make that light. It's a long one. Yeah, it's um, it's kind of it's kind of chilly, chillier because I don't know. In in Tokyo, there's like a there's a nip in the air, meaning it's not that cold. But it's this, it's deceptive. There's like maybe it's because we're on the sea, I'm not sure. Wow, check out that vending machine corner. Must be some good stuff over there. It's across the street. Oh, there's no crosswalk here. All right, there's gonna be another one, I'm sure of it. <laughs> yeah, it's um, usually gets down to, most days are about between seven and, and 11 degrees Celsius. So between like 40, 42 and 52 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter. So it doesn't really get to freezing very often, maybe after midnight in Tokyo. The weather is kind of cool, but for the most part, Tokyo is very much like Washington, D.C. The weather there. Sendai would be like Boston. So it gets quite chilly up there. Hokkaido is like Alaska. <laughs> it's like Canada. It gets pretty chilly up there. It gets up to minus 30. All right, we're one stop away from Shinjuku now. That's the Toei Shinjuku line. Ake Bonobashi is the name of the station. There's not a lot of people who get off here. It's like the lowlands before we get to Shinjuku. But if you're going towards Yotsuya, there's a lot of stuff that you can see there. Um, so yeah, here's the Yotsuya Sanchome. So you can cut across here and you go through um, Aria, Ara, Araki, there's Araki Park. I've been here before. I spent the night there once. There's a, a really nice neighborhood. So it might be worth staying in this area instead of Shinjuku. Stay in this area. Arakicho, I think that's what it's called. Yeah, that place is so cool because it's a it's got that small town feel, but you're a uh, 15 minute walking distance to Shinjuku. All right, we'll cross the street here. Yeah. Hey, Jennifer French. Happy New Year. We're about three days away. I'm not sure what we're going to do for the new year. I guess with the family. It's the Cafe Dexter Morgan. Over there. Sorry about the wind. It's a little bit of a breeze here. I'm guessing that when we get to Shinjuku, the, the tall buildings are gonna knock it down significantly. But there is a light breeze. Oh, 
I'd like to have a quiz. Who's, who are those? <laughs> Anime characters, cool. Tokyo might be windy because it's, it is a city on the sea. <laughs> so it's sort of the Pacific Ocean might be whisking th whisky through here a little bit. But I had to take out the wireless mic to charge the phone to continue the journey. Don't worry though, if you're, if you're watching this in playback, there are, I'm going to add in chapter menus so you can, Mr. Das is here. I know what to do with that. Look over there. This is a, one of those um, old Showa era streets that not a lot of people know. Akebonobashi Dori has another unique, like time stand still road. Lots of old shops, loads of gram grannies family-run businesses and it's right next to Shinjuku so we're about oh, I don't know like I, I think you're gonna start to see already straight ahead you, you see the buildings are starting to get a little bit higher and that is the Shinjuku spear I saw a um, Tomi car like a matchbox car with these uh, highway cars, the yellow highway cars with the sirens on the top of it. <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool. All these weird cars that are only in Japan, that is one of them. You won't find another highway car looking like that. Ever since uh, Leo came into the world, I have been looking at all the toys that Japan has to offer. And it looks like I'm gonna be doing a special episode on Japanese toys really soon. I'm sure some of you out there watching might be collectors. Do you have any any toys that I should have my eyes on? Playrail, Playrail was one that I've been looking at where you can build a train set out of these plastic tracks. Been really popular with kids ages three and up. If you look over to the right, there's an Eon uh, supermarket. Eon has um, these little mini markets in the city. And these alleys here, do you see how the road goes straight to Shinjuku? But you'll find these like old roads, old ancient roads. They don't go in a grid pattern, but they'll wind in, in the wrong direction. So when you go in central Tokyo, make sure that you, you take the right road. If you, if you take the wrong light left turn <laughs> and you go full left for example you could be going in the, in the completely wrong direction for a very long way it's easy to get lost in tokyo too motorcycles a toy ages 16 and up <laughs> yeah right in japan i think it's it's uh 20 and up i don't think you can get a motorcycle license until you're 20. You know, if I do find a beer vending machine, I might, Mr. Das, take part. It is now afternoon. <laughs> All right, we're walking at a faster pace. <laughs> this is the home stretch now. <sighs> okay, we got this. We got this. It's only seven kilometers. I wanted to do this walk as well. Not this one, but this one I'm about to tell you. To wake up in the morning at like 5 a.m. and just walk as far as I can walk in 24 hours and see how far I can get. I always wanted to do that. Has anyone ever done that? Done this before? Get up, because I, I say 24 hours because if I walk through the night, at 5 a.m. the trains start to run back the other way, so I'll be able to catch the train. Just walk for 24 hours. How far can you go? All right, yeah, some of you might, might fall asleep. Some of you might, you know, not be able to do the whole thing. But, I mean, how far could you get? Kind of a challenge. If you have Google Maps going, you could probably, 
uh, track the exact distance, but there are apps and there are the walking walk meters that will me measure the steps that you take. I always wondered if I walked, I'm sure I can walk past Yokohama from Tokyo, maybe even get down to, I don't know, Fujisawa. 24 hours is a long time. I ran, I ran the Tokyo Marathon. My best time was uh, three hours and 12 minutes for 42 kilometers. So that's three hours at a running pace. And if I walk a third of the pace that I ran, I'm pretty sure I could notch off 100K in a day. It's, might be a really generous amount, but it, you just have to keep going. This way. We're also going to be close to the Shinjuku Gyoen National Park. We'll be walking pretty close to there. All right, so we're 96 minutes in. I didn't get to Shinjuku in 90 minutes or less. We got kind of close. This is the Shinjuku Ward, though. So technically, I've succeeded. <laughs> so, technically. But success is not about technicalities. Well, you know, success is success, right? I guess I'll, I'll take it. Whew. Tokyo Marathon. When I started it, and we got another hill here. I did Tokyo Marathon in 2007, the first open to the general public Tokyo Marathon, and there was a Ferrari that just went by. There, nobody knew about it really, that the Tokyo Marathon was happening in 2007. They didn't promote it openly so well, and nobody knew it was public. So I entered and I got in. It was very easy to get into the Tokyo Marathon. Nowadays, in order to run in the Tokyo Marathon, you're in a lottery, and I believe it's seven or eight percent of the people who enter actually get a chance to run the Tokyo Marathon. So I haven't been able to get in over the last uh, 10 years, but I got in the first five years somehow. So from 2007 to 2012, I got into the Tokyo Marathon and was able to run. One year, I think I got injured. Yeah, I, I had to pull out because I injured a, a hamstring. And I, I, I was really upset because I'd, I'd been training so hard. I wanted to beat my time and uh, I couldn't do it that year. Ah, oh, getting winded. What do I love most about Japan, writes and Lazy? I don't know. It's, that's such a big, there's no one, one thing. There's a lot of stuff that I don't like too, by the way. And, and uh, there's a lot of things that I do love. And I guess, you know, the safety and the convenience, the food, the culture of good food, the culture of... Um, all right, see, I guess it's a, it's a give and take. It's a give and take. Because there's this um, desire to strive to be perfect, you have cuisine that is by far I think like some of the best in the world Japanese cuisine we don't say that about American cuisine so much American cuisine is just it's just cuisine it's food you eat it it's good but here it's great but that that culture is also very stressful to strive to be perfect at everything you do all the time but it also but you know if, if you're if you're living here you have to try to fit into the society, which is a lot harder living here than it is coming here as a tourist. But you can take advantage of both worlds. You could be, have your, keep your Western culture and you could stay true to yourself. It's who you are. You don't have to become Japanese. And I, I'm somebody who doesn't, uh, I'm very happy to be American living here in Japan. Just like I have friends that are Japanese living in the United States and they don't, they don't particularly want to be Japanese. They're, they're proud of being, or they don't want to be American. They're, pr they're proud of being who they are. 
I think that what, that's what makes up the United States. Everybody is comes from a place of immigrants, but we're a melting pot. And Japan is not a melting pot. Japan is not a melting pot. Japan is a, um, it's, it's, I don't know, it's its own country, its own culture. That's not their culture. I don't see Jeeps that often here. Wow. All right, we're very close. Very close to the end here. Pick up the pace. A lot of apartments here. You don't see that in Shinjuku off of the, off of the main road. A lot of them are, are office buildings here. You'll see people who do live right here off of the main street in the city. Yes, Kunidori. The great thing about walking Tokyo, instead of taking the train, the subway underground, you see everything. You see every convenience store, every cafe, every restaurant, every, every car that goes by here if you're looking down. You can see the manhole covers, you can see uh, the people, the, the way they dress, the faces, the way they live their culture, the way they ride their bicycles. Legally, you're supposed to do what he's doing, although he's kind of reckless. You're not supposed to ride on the sidewalks here. Like you could see that culture if you walk. And Tokyo is not such a massive city like Manhattan. You can walk across Manhattan too. It takes a lot longer. I think Manhattan is what, seven, eight miles? I, I can't remember. I know it's, it's quite a long island, but you can walk the sideways pretty quickly. But the long way of Manhattan, it takes a long time, I think. We're getting, we're getting there. I think we passed Yotsuya Station and we're moving our way closer. There's a Starbucks on the corner and that's my indication on the map to take a left. But that's, that cafe might not be there anymore. <laughs> Sometimes he... I've done this walk, I, I told you when we started like five, six, seven times, I can't remember. It's quite a long walk, but Sometimes the monuments or landmarks that I know where to turn aren't there anymore. Don't see anything interesting. What? So there's always some kind of weird drink. Hold on a second. Is this is a new one. That's oh, a corn. Oh, that's a corn portage. Okay, I've had that before. Let's see if we can find a vending machine bank. Joy, I've never, I, I've never seen that weird name before in a drink. Yoshinoya has really cleaned up its, like, renovated its it image for the 2020 decade. There's a, a gyu sukiyaki. I guess it's a suki sukiyaki don. That looks really good. All right, let's try to get out of the wind. Look at this. Lawson store has produce in the front of it. I like that. It makes it feel like a local neighborhood market, but it's a convenience store. All right, I think we're in the final 1,200 meters of uh, this walk. There's a link in the description to the map if you want to follow along. <laughs> Shinjuku Sanchomei. I believe we are entering Shinjuku Sanchomei and then, and then it's only about five minutes to Shinjuku Station from there. <sighs> Wish you saw a lot. Whoa. They have pet diapers. Oh no, these are like uh, Dio sheets. I don't, never owned a dog in Japan, so I'm not sure what they were. I'm always looking at the prices of diapers. <laughs> Leo, Leo goes through them. I 
apparently got two kinds of diapers now. They have the pants type and the tape type. The tape has the two tapes on the on the, the front that you can you open up. The pants type are like, you know, like pants. But you have to rip them off after he's done done his, you know, number one or number two. Tape and pants, not pet. But oh, those, those, I don't know, were they pet diapers? I don't really know. Never owned a pet here. I've never seen a pet wear diapers, so I'm guessing they might have just been wipes or something. Use cloth diapers, you will save a fortune. I bet. It's better for the environment too, maybe. But the amount of times that he goes through diapers too is, is crazy right now. Oh, we can make this light. <laughs> there you go. Shinjuku ni cho me. Pants style does not sound fun to me. <laughs> Here we are. We're talking about diapers. It's a wonderful world. Speaking of wonderful worlds. Gyoza. Oh, it smells nice. This is the post lunch crowd now. So we are in the Shinjuku Sanchome area. I'm gonna be making a left, I believe at this intersection. I think if we go straight, we go past uh, Kabukicho. And if you want to see more on Kabukicho and Golden Guy, I have a live stream for you. We went there about three weeks ago with Tokyo Sam, TKY. Oh, Sam, who knows the area very well. A lot of great insight from Sam and a uh, very good guy. Hope to catch up with him over the holiday too. I'll give him a call. Nichome is known for its uh, um, diversity. LGBT uh, area for sure. So this is the intersection that'll take you over towards Shinjuku Gyoen. Let me show you where we are in the map. We're very close to the end. We're here at this intersection. This is Shinjuku Gyoen, a beautiful park, especially during the cherry blossom seasons or any time of the year. You have to pay to get in here. It's not free, by the way. It's like 200 or 300 yen. And Shinjuku Sanchome Station is right here. We just gotta go right here. That's it, boom, JR. So we'll probably be there in about, uh, three, four minutes, but let's see if we can get something to eat since the phone is still going. So am I. We're close to five, uh, we're close to uh, 600 likes. Thank you for that. That's fuel for the live stream, so. Welcome to Shinjuku, it's pretty cool. Uh, I kind of, you know, I. I kind of like Shinjuku area better than the than Shibuya. There's more to it, I think. There's just more... There's a, a different dimension to Shinjuku than there is. It's like an adult town, I guess. Shibuya is more of a kid town. Alright, here we go. final 700 meters or so. Has anyone ever stayed the night in Shinjuku? What area of the city of Tokyo do you like to stay when you, st when you, when you visit the city? 
leave a comment uh, here and let us know because it's interesting to hear. It's an interesting statue. <laughs> yeah, we just got off of, of uh, Yasukuni Shrine, Yasukuni Dori, and now we're heading the final 550 meters to Shinjuku Station. And this is Shinjuku Gochome. So we're pretty close to here. This is still Yasukuni Dori. Yeah. But I'm about to take a left here. I'm about to take a left. Shinjuku Sanchome, which is where we are, is very famous for uh, the department stores, the shopping. Isetan is a massive old department store that just takes up so much of the Shinjuku Sanchome. And the, the neighborhoods in Tokyo are are um, separated by chome or towns. And each town within an area is numbered. This is Shinjuku 3 or Shinjuku San Chome. San is 3 in Japanese. There's also Shinjuku Go Chome, Shinjuku Ni Chome, Ichome, which is town 1. I believe Shibuya is, is, and all the other places are separated like that. My, the place, the area that I live in, I, I think we live in uh, Nichome, so. Each town has a number. All right, I, I'm making a left here to go straight into the sun. Because on the left side, sorry, the right side, you can see Isetan. You see that? Massive department store in the basement. That's where you, you find some of the really expensive fruits. The most luxurious department store in Tokyo, maybe? I don't know. That's a pretty bold statement. Because Ginza has some pretty luxurious department stores too. Wako. I believe on the top floor of Wako, they have a toilet made of gold. I remember walking up there 20 years ago. What is that car right there? Does anybody know? He's got one of those Batman bicycles too. What is that car? Is that a Ferrari? That's a Ferrari. Whoa! I wonder what, what these, these Ferrari owners do for a job here. I have walked from Shinjuku to Shibuya many times on, on, as live streams. It's one of my favorite walks. You can go through Harajuku or you can go through uh, Meiji Shrine. There's a pathway from uh, Yoyogi to Shibuya through Meiji Shrine. It's dark, it's very mystical, and there's no signal in there, so don't try to live stream it. Yeah, I'm a magnet for Ferraris. I just never get to be in one. I just get to see them. <laughs> they drive by me. All right, so a lot of you know where I am. I've been here before. This is Shinjuku Dori, and we're going to make a right on Shinjuku Dori and, and make our way towards Shinjuku Station now. Here we go. Let's see if we can cross the street here. Follow that man. There you go, that's our goal, almost. So we just have a little bit more ways to go. About 300 meters from here. Now I used to live in a place called Shinozaki and I would take the Toei Shinjuku line every single day. There's the, the entrance to Isetan. Very, very nice department store. I only go in there in the summertime to cool down because they also have very nice air conditioning. This is the Apple store. I still got a big, big beef with Apple. I ordered an iPhone 13 Pro 
to do these live streams in October. It still hasn't arrived. It was probably stolen from my apartment because Apple did not require a signature for a $1,500 item. They just put it in a locker that wasn't locked. So when I got back from Nagano, there was nothing in the locker and they won't send me a new iPhone. They say that they've delivered it. So my insurance won't cover it. American Express won't cover it. So I'm stuck with nothing. But in Apple's defense, they are still giving me a call once a week to update me on what, I don't know. But the customer service experience from Apple has been absolutely awful. Same with Japan Post. It's been awful because they don't want to admit that they had mail stolen. So don't buy your phones from the Apple store. Buy them from Amazon because Amazon's experience is way better than buying directly from Apple because I would never have thought that they would require that they wouldn't require a signature for a $1,500 iPhone that's really one of the most stolen items in the world. I already told Apple that that phone is for a channel with 275,000 people who purchased the, that's what the phone is for. So you're taken away from their experience. I don't think that really made a difference. <laughs> I don't think they care. If they did, they would have just sent me a new phone right away. That's what I would have done. It's an issue between them and the post office. The post office blames Apple because Apple didn't tell them that it was an iPhone. So the post office doesn't actually know that it's a $1,500 item inside of there. So they just put it in the locker. In the end, I'm the one who suffers and you too. Oh, hey, there's my mask. on sale so you would be getting better signal better low light quality all this other stuff if, if Apple had delivered that iPhone two months ago which is how long I've been waiting now maybe look at the right thing who knows if it was Apple USA I bet you I would have gotten the phone already but Apple Japan has procedures quote-unquote they follow the rules that they have Never mind the customer experience. And if you're watching from Cupertino, get in touch with me. <laughs> Maybe you can help me out. I think somebody, some old guy who doesn't know what's going on needs to get a kick in the rear. Sometimes people need that. A reminder of the customer experience, even in Japan. When, you're, when they're face to face to you, it's different than when they're talking to you on the telephone. It's always been like that though I'm not too angry all right so um, straight ahead we have the 3d cat and a lot of people so my mask is on because we're in a crowded space we can make that light <laughs> this is Shinjuku station everybody Mr. Das, we ate Super Chats are expensive on iPhone. Uh, wait. Yeah, that's true. Maybe if you're watching on a Google phone, it's better. There's a 3D cat. He looks different on the iPhone. I don't know why. I guess the uh, HDR rendering does something weird with the TV screen. But this was really popular about six months ago when they put this in. It was the first like massive 3D cat. Now it's cat all the time, all day. And the TV screen wraps around. So you still see a lot of people. Yeah, the HDR rendering does an awful job with uh, this. It looks a lot more realistic. <laughs> He's looking down at the people crossing the street. 
Oh, he's saying what Leo's first word was. Nay, 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 nay. Interesting. All right, guess what? Johnny can go home. This is Shinjuku Station. And it has been truly an epic adventure. Whether you believe that or not, <laughs> that's up to you. But for me, I feel a little bit lighter. I got a chance to use, I, I got a chance to use um, my legs and burn off some of those pies and cookies that I ate and take you on a little bit of a trip here. There's Shinjuku's East Gate. And a lot of you might know exactly where I am. I'm gonna walk over to the, uh, to the uh, south side now because I gotta jump on the Oedo line. So extended live stream. Let's see if we can get to 750 likes by the end of this. That's my, my personal goal. That would make this a huge success. Tig Rates in here. Easiest walk I've ever had. <laughs> I, got, I love these shoes that I have. These Keen, uh, I forget what they're called. They're pretty good walking shoes. I think Megan knows some of the stores around here. I think that was a Lush. Yeah, right there. Boom. Uh, the Keen Austin shoes. That's right, UFO Bob. Bingo. Oh, she's wearing, that's, I got Kanai that same uh, jacket from Uniqlo. Somebody left a message. Somebody left a message that uh, I bought Kanai a vacuum for Christmas. And I, I, I want, uh, tell me what you think about the message, okay? So they said that I shouldn't have given Kanai a, a vacuum for Christmas. I should have given her a gift that was romantic. But personally, I don't think jewelry, chocolates, lingerie are romantic. I think romance is not an item. Romance is you know, something that you might say or a moment you might share together or it's not an object. And anyways, I don't think that the person who left the comment has ever used a Dyson vacuum, Cyclone. The thing really picks up, it's like so much fun to vacuum the house. I find myself just picking it up and, and vacuuming even though we just did it, because it's fun. So I think it's more about toys, but personally, Christmas time, tech is always good. I'm not a big believer in diamonds and jewelry, wearing bling and all this other stuff. I think it's a Japanese thing. You don't see a lot of Japanese wearing diamonds and jewelry either. They don't want to look like they're rich and stylish. Although they, they might use, and this is, a, this is a really bad generalization, but uh, it kind of holds true. You will see expensive handbags, usually by younger people. But the average person, they don't want to look you know, all blinged out. All right, let me go up here and then I will end the live stream. What a nice walk. I feel great. I'm glad that we did this. If you have any questions, please do leave a comment. I do read them. I like to look and see what you guys are writing. Looks like somebody's singing down here. So for Japanese, Christmas is not Christmas is not a significant holiday, but there is a little bit of spirit. So that's why you don't really wow. That's why you, you don't really get a lot of spirit in uh, Christmas time in Japan because the time of their holiday here, our holiday I should say because I live here is uh, Shogatsu, which starts now. So you see more of a festive mood, I guess, now than you do during the Christmas time. 
Yeah, that's right. New Year's is big. But it's a family thing. So if you're a tourist and you're here for Shogatsu during the New Year, it's not really the same kind of an experience. Unless you get invited to a Japanese family's house, which is kind of cool that you can eat ozone and some of the traditional foods that they have. But sometimes the hotels will prepare that for you. And that's always really special. Because New Year's is, is one of the most cultural times of the year to visit. That's right, I will have soba on the 31st. We will have ozone, ozone on the, the January 1st. Oh, I'm so winded. Ah. Gotta get back into shape. That's one of my New Year's resolutions. Go back to the gym. I've, I've uh, not been going to the gym for two years now because of the pandemic. I usually use the, the playgrounds, <laughs> use the monkey bars for pull-ups and, and push-ups and I keep in shape that way, but I wouldn't say I'm in shape. Dad shape, dad bod. Kanai does make really good ozoni. She just went to the supermarket to get all of the, the stuff. There's local markets too that are very famous for certain parts of the Shogatsu meal. Some of the lines for them are massive. Here's Shinjuku Sancho May live, everybody. You have made it. Congratulations. Shinjuku live. So it took two hours, but typically if you walk without stopping, it'll take you 90 minutes to get here. And what you see in between there is pretty cool. You can stop at some of the smaller neighborhoods. You can take to explore the alleys on the way. And these are places a lot of tourists don't actually see because a lot of them just stay on the Yamanote line. They don't actually walk. I saw more of Tokyo in these two hours than some people see on their entire trip. You did because you joined me for most of it. And I thank you. Fomp writes in here, encouragement to exercise. Yes. Do the 24 hour challenge. Leave your house at 5 a.m. and just keep walking. <laughs> See how long you can go. I appreciate that very much, guys. <sighs> Thank you so much. Uh, I'll be back, uh, do a couple more live streams before the end of the new year. Um, I wanted to see if, if Kanai uh, wanted to talk about the, new, the year two that we just had. Take a look back on 2021. For me, this is a, a year I can't wait to end. It was a, the most challenging year that I've ever had in my life. And I've had some challenging years over the last several years, actually. This one might have been the worst. But we came out of it. We're still here. And that gives me a lot of hope going into 2022. Like, if I could get through this year and all the challenges that were put in front of me and still, you know, do my best with the channel and get back into the production, then anything is possible. Even at the ripe old age of what I am right now, which you don't really want to know. In the YouTube age, I'm, I'm pretty pretty old <laughs> for YouTubers, but never let that slow me down. In fact, I probably got more energy than some of those, some of those other YouTubers. Fungus US Marine Corps. Get rid of the quarantine 15, absolutely. You will not get to 0%. The Prime Minister thinks he can get to zero, you can't do it. Anything after six days is a waste of time. You know that, I know that. Hopefully they know that. You proved still so young. Thank you, Yuzukaga. Yuzukaga, thank you. Jody, thank you for being here too. Adney, Raymond, Tokyo Paul. I really appreciate you guys joining me on this. Let's, let's hope 2022 is a great year and we have a couple days to go. Uh, see everybody. Have a good day. Have a good night. Thank you. And goodbye from Shinjuku.